Hey everybody, it's Desiree and welcome to Road to Par the Podcast. Here we'll be helping you enhance your golf experiences through a little education, a little entertainment, and events and travel. So stay tuned, we have some live interviews that'll be coming up and just talking more in depth about the golf community and where we are, where we've been, and where we're going. So stay tuned for your Road to Par. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Desiree Walker, and welcome to Road to Par the Podcast. I am super excited. Today, we have a special guest, one of our dear golf friends, uh, music uh, lover and life lover all in one. Marcus Johnson is on with us today. Thank you for joining us, Marcus. It's absolutely my pleasure, Desiree. Listen, you know, I laugh because we are here actually in our home course, which is Country Club of Woodmore. And I think, what was it, a few weeks ago, we were uh, very blessed to have a birthday outing with you. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes, yes. My I'm not yet 50 birthday party. So uh, <laughs> it was awesome. Lim did a great job working with you to get people out there. And I loved my uh, cupcakes with uh, the golf ball, the white chocolate golf Those cool. ball. Those were cool. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> and, and, of course, I mean, C.C. Woodmore is um, – as uh is my home away from home i love it there they treat me well there and it's a great course very very challenging <laughs> listen i mean it, we always have a great time and so for folks who don't know marcus and i have been friends actually for quite a few years now and i will tell you all that his energy and his light literally has been there from day one um i think we met at a tournament was it tpc um avenel tpc uh potomac Yep. And ever since, I couldn't even begin to tell you, we've been on cruises for Capital Jazz. We've been in Puerto Rico playing golf off the humble. And when I tell you this man is just literally the most positive person I know, how do you do it, Marcus? You know, I'm thankful. I mean, you know, um, my father always used to say before he passed, I'd call him and he's like, I'd be like, Dad, how you doing? He's like, son, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. And I get that from him. I get it from my mom, you know, my book, um, even in my, my podcast yesterday, in my radio show, I talked about the chapter for the love of um, laughter. And I got it from my parents who, who always taught us to not take ourselves too seriously. And in a time, you know, I mean, we've been living in some crazy times. I mean, I, I guess you could say every generation has its, its points. Uh, I can point to my parents and them telling me, dude, you got to laugh at yourself or else this is not worth it. This is not a dress rehearsal. It's your life. And why not enjoy every stop? So you always have to have the positive outlook. Absolutely. And so you mentioned your book, which I'm very thankful that I have a copy of, a flow book. And can you break that down a little bit? Um, and also, where can people find a copy of your book if they are, are looking for it? Oh, right. Oh. You can find a copy right here, right? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So it's living uh, the journey of life with intention, love, passion, and happiness. Uh, forward by Sheila Johnson from Salamander Resorts. Um, and also, the audio book just came out. So uh, I have lately just been an audible person. And I thought it would be great to get the book up there and um, came in my studio. As you see, I have my, my baby here and, you know, the, the, there's sitting on another keyboard, another, you know, child of mine. <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, you can get flow uh, for the love of, um, okay. which I think life is. It's, we should right. be doing all of this for the love of ourselves. I think we need a for the love of golf book. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's one of those things where we are uh, so very thankful to have the opportunity to, um, as you said, be grateful of our blessings, right? So um, we've got the book. We've got also Flow Wine, which I see behind you. Uh, I know we have had quite a few events. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, hey, this is all limb. All this stuff is here, just like ready it. and grab. She's like, you have to have your stuff right here. I you love know, it. Uh, I love it. I know a lot of people have been asking, when are we going to have another Marcus Johnson event? Um, I know we've done a couple of them out at Lake Presidential, um, but people are missing live music, which I know right now with COVID is such a tough component. So how does that work as a musician? So for me, it's, it's kind of interesting. Number one, we will be doing something as soon as maybe 
planning it starting today if Prince George's County jumps into phase three. Um, some other places have and, you know, outdoor events. We're doing some, you know, a couple things coming up. Um, COVID for me and quarantine in particular have been interesting um, with a silver lining. Number one, everybody was really scared in the beginning. Like, what are we going to do? Um, fortunately for me, I tell people I was born to the parents I was born to that made me get these other degrees. Uh, so as soon as COVID hit, I started pivoting a lot of my clients that were just music clients, um, really understanding that, you know, we're not necessarily in the music business, but we are absolutely in the, uh, uh, like promotions business. We use our music to help people get, get people into clubs to help them make money selling food and, you know, um, beverages. So we t I took my promotions team and started pivoting and started a consulting firm. So we got a couple of nonprofit clients, pretty huge, to tide us over um, for a little bit. And that's been going very well. Uh, we have a big event October 16th with the uh, National Center for Children and Family. And we're repositioning their entire brand and pushing them along. Um, and then at the same time, I've been doing a lot of coaching. And now what's happening is the corporate events and um, online virtual performances, as well as like Blues Alley, you have your Blues Alley shirt on. We did a, a, a concert last week with them where you're getting hundreds of people around the world at a time to come in that you're able to engage. So um, this has gotten a lot of people over a lot of humps. Right. Um, right. Most people were not willing to look at a concert online. Now, you know, you have your sound bar or, you know, your earpiece and, you know, you're, you're willing to sit back and engage with me uh, um, over, you know, a, a stream yard, a Zoom, a, you know, YouTube live, Instagram live, and the interaction is that much better. So it's forced musicians also to open up and be a lot more vulnerable themselves. And that's, that's very key because it's not just what we play, it's who we are. It's our why that makes uh, sense to people. And that's how it's that, that's And that's really insightful because I know that, you know, a lot of people are trying to, not just mus musicians, but people in general are trying to find ways to cope and deal with everything that's going on with COVID. So how is it that, um, I'll say, when we talk about the streaming aspect and the connectivity, do you think that people um, are really going to be ready to go back into venues at some point, or is it going to change the dynamic for a little while? I think it's going to change the dynamic for a little while, but what I think it's going to do is um, it's going to force, uh, one, it expands the market, because there were people who were already, uh, I don't know the, 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 the exact term of germaphobes, that's the, the slang for it, but people who were sensitive to, to, to germs and um, uh, being around other people, it, it is, uh, is that, no, hypochondriac is when you get sick, right? Anyway, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> but, 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 but I think those people wanted to engage and now they have a germ-free, touch-free way to do so. So I believe that what's gonna happen is you'll have that market split off, stay home, and then those who need, you know, the, the interaction, the, the actual physical touch and sight of, you know, and, and feeling of being around other people, they're going to, you know, do that as well. So I think what we've done is consolidated a market that will then split, but be two bigger markets um, post, you know, post COVID. I mean, it's also kind of just, and we are very in a somber mood for all the loss that we've had from the economy and from loved ones. But also it's kind of in a creative um, energy with it as well though, right? So because you're, and I know you've always been a jack of all trades, if you will, in terms of you have found so many different um, components that feed into one another. And I feel like the creativity that needs to come from persevering through all that we are going through is actually quite energetic. I mean, here I am on a podcast now before I was just out on the, the golf course. And so it's the ability to still reach. And I think our reach is actually growing even more, as you said, because now we have these break off sectors from same industries, but new components that we're able to reach people. And I think that's amazing. 
Well, again, I, I think that this, uh, you know, they say that, uh, um, what is the adversity is the mother of, you know, uh, invention or necessity is the mother of invention. And we are as business owners, I mean, the clubs now have to put cameras in their clubs. My business plan for my jazz club uh, that, you know, I was going to build 10 years ago had cameras in it because I understood that in order to build a brand, you need to be able to create relationships. Um, creating relationships and building trust is in having the video, having the interviews with people, putting them online so that when people travel to your city, they're looking for the Flow Lounge or they're looking for, you know, Road to Park. I need to catch up with Desiree. Let me go to her website. Let me see if I can get a tea time with her. Hey, where do I need to be? Then by, you know, um, uh, uh, basically compiling and gathering those markets, we're able to make money advertising on that as well, because we can now look at our analytics and tell, you know, potential strategic partners what we can do. And so it is forcing people to do what I've been trying to bang on everybody's head, which is be students of your industry, always. If you're a club, I spoke at um, the National Association of, Cl of Clubs and in, in Resorts or whatever, mm -hmm. of which, you know, Club Core and all those guys right, were there. And I'm like, right. your industry is changing, man. And this is pre-COVID. This is almost, I would say, it's about a good set, six years ago that I went to Houston and I spoke. And it was just like, look, you're going to have to start having events. You making money on your minimums, that's done. Maybe... The congressionals of the world, maybe, maybe the Avenels of the world or, 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 you know, Chevy Chases, maybe. But still, if you're not having programming that is relevant to your constituency and to your clients, then you're going out of business. And those clubs that get that are really, you know, are, are, are growing. And so it's forced all of us to evaluate what business we're really in. And it's the provision of services and products and to take care of, you know, the mental psyche of our, our uh, consumer base. And, and you touched on something earlier with that. You said relationships. So how long have you been playing golf? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say probably about 25 years. Now, playing well, uh, about three weeks. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, um, but playing, you know, since I was in law school, since I was, uh, it was about 25 years ago. So, and... and the reason I asked about that is because um, we had an earlier guest on Mr. Bancroft Gordon, and he touched on relationships and golf and the need for people to be involved um, in a growth component. So have you found that um, golf has um, helped flow, helped Marcus Johnson, helped you in terms of growth, in terms of business? Absolutely. Um, one one specific uh, specific excuse me example would be I think you played one day with me on my last birthday with Craig Reinhardt, um, and Craig is a mentor of mine. We actually both spoke at Georgetown Law about three years ago, and what ended up happening is I invited him to play golf at Lake Presidential two birthdays ago, and we started a conversation. And as I began to, you know, move on this new deal that we're working on to expand flow, you know, nationwide, um, as, as of 2021, I called him for advice and I asked him to look at this contract. And he then said, you know, hey, look, let's get back together. And we played Woodmore not too long ago. Um, and, you know, he's like, well, I know you, you know, your publicist should be doing this for you and this. And I'm like, okay, I know this, but I'm like, do you know any good publicists? Because I don't have one. So he connected me with someone who connected me with someone, <coughs> excuse me, who connected me with a firm out of Los Angeles. She has an office in Los Angeles, Nashville, and New York. That, and she used to, uh, she used to rep like Jay Leno. She was a head publicist for um, uh, NBC Universal there. And you know, she works with Jillian Michaels, Mitch Album, all these people now, and she's my publicist, all because I had, you know, four hours to like say like, here's what's going right, here's what's going wrong. Right. And, and I think a key component to relationships is being vulnerable. 
Um, I think people go out and just play golf for the fact of playing golf. That's not really it. And, you know, when you can get out there, hit the ball, that says something about who you are. Right. Um, golf is something that, that definitely allows you to illustrate, illuminate um, who you are. And then when you can see that in other people and they can see the discipline and or the skill, it kind of, it opens, it, it unlocks a curiosity. And then when they see that you have this going in business mm-hmm. and, um, you know, that you're willing to take the four hours out or five hours out to sit and play and, and listen to what they have and what you may be able to offer them, that is the, you know, the definition of relationship. You are relating, <laughs> you know, trying relating, to relate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's a better, a better uh, place to do it. Well, and, and I find it very interesting. Uh, very early on, someone gave me the advice. The better golf you play, the better business you will have. And so when you talked about the discipline and you talked about the dedication, um, you know, yes, the, the lifestyle of golf and being on the golf course and traveling and doing all the wonderful things are great. But I also found the conversation is a little bit more streamlined when your game is streamlined, if that makes sense, right? So it's the synergy of it. And so when you say spending time with, you know, when you're on the golf course, and of course, these are always topics for a later time, you spend time getting to know somebody. Mm -hmm. And that time is well spent when you're able to have the same conversation in the same context. And I think that's amazing that you've been able to do so and continuously do so uh, for a number of years. Yeah. And, you know, the life lessons that you learn in golf as well, as you're going down the course, people get to see your temperament, you get to see theirs. And uh, when you hit those good shots, and if you can do them consistently, I played uh, Whiskey Creek earlier this week. And you, because I have invested in some good weapons now, you know, my new Mizuno <laughs> thing, um, and some lessons from Rodney at, you know, uh, at Woodmore and Brendan at Alney, you know, I shot, I had a blow up hole on the front nine and still shot a 45 on the front nine, right? Okay. And there's a par three there that's 154 over the water to the right, which invites anybody with a slice to go bloop. And I hit it within four feet of the um, of the hole, and yeah. this is on a this is on a four or five hole run of par uh, with one bogey, and they're just like, oh my god! And one of the other people is a lawyer, and then all of a sudden it was like, I'm gonna pay a little bit more attention because I need to figure out. <laughs> You know how did you know, like what's your and, secret, right? <laughs> that's it. And, yeah. and and people are like, "Well, you you have to be kidding me, nah, man." A great investment for you. Anybody out here is a decent set of clubs to good set of clubs if you can afford them. Some lessons, and then to get out and play. Even if you go places by yourself and end up in a twosome or a threesome or someone else, you know, someone else's foursome, and you're the single. I've met so many different people from business, people who, who are fans of my music, people who are fans of my wine, people who don't know who I am, but you know, are in public relations or food and beverage. It just works, man. And then not to mention as a, as a business development tool, tournaments, right. being part of tournaments and going in as a single or with, with a friend and being paired with somebody else and let, calling ahead and saying, look, I, if you have someone in the food and beverage in, um, industry and they have a twosome, can you hook me up? Being uh, strategic about it is important as well. And proactive because, I mean, you know, running tournaments is one of those things where your ultimate goal, especially in, in those environments, is you do want to pair people who are uh, have same synergies and can have conversations and enjoy themselves, right? So exactly. a, a, a big part of that is just feeling comfortable. And so... I, I'm just excited to, to finally get you on. I know we have had some great adventures in golf. As you said, we've played golf on your birthday, which is always an amazing treat. Um, and so very much thank you to Lim as well for assisting this year because that was, that was major with the golf balls and the cupcakes. But I love everything you're doing, Marcus. And I, I also wanted to make sure that people knew what was going on with Flo because Flo is just an amazing brand. Um, the wine, if it were not in the morning time, up oh, it might be wine o'clock soon. <laughs> so, 
Is it one o'clock? That's that's a shirt. Is it one o'clock? Get your flow on. That's what I need. Yeah. Uh (laughs) And so, and and I read the book years ago and I I keep it and reread it at times. And so it is just instrumental and I think vital to have people like yourself continuing to teach because we didn't even talk about that. Are you still teaching? Um, Yes, I am uh, teaching business development. I'm uh, currently on kind of a pseudo hiatus because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the entrepreneur in residence at Linfield University out of McMinnville, Oregon. And of course, we know what's going on in Oregon right now. So you have we COVID do. and um, Oregon wine country is on fire. <clears throat> wow. So, um, it, it's horrible. I mean, even Napa and Marin, I mean, these are, you know, we really need to pay attention to climate change. Yeah. and what is going on not yeah. to mention make sure you are registered to vote and if you yes. have to go to voting vote, vote, glass, vote. <laughs> get out there but yeah and i teach business development and I'm, I'm excited i mean i just brought on one of my former students as an assistant who was one of my stars and uh very excited about the things that you know we're doing together but teaching seating back into our community is a responsibility um it is not something that you, you should you should do it is your responsibility to go back and yeah. teach those um the experiences that you have and the wisdom that you get uh glean from absolutely well marcus i know you are a very busy man and i am super super excited to have you on and we appreciate you stopping past the road to park podcast um do you have any events uh virtual uh or anything that our listeners need to know before we go Absolutely. Uh, next weekend on the 28th, I'm doing the Polo, um, U.S. Polo and Jazz. And is that the, is it Grandiosity uh, Events? Grandiosity Events, yes. Okay. You can find it at grandiosityevents.com. Okay. Um, so I'm performing uh, there and we'll be sponsoring the VIP tent. Um, and then, you know, my radio show is on multiple cities uh, throughout the week. If you go to MarcusJohnson360.com, it'll let you know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. And sign up for our newsletter so we can let you know what's going on. Because there's a lot between now and, you know, February mm-hmm. that's going to be going on with the wine and music. And, well, we're uh, excited. And um, hopefully we can get Road to Par and Marcus Johnson back on the calendar when things uh, settle down out here. Uh, but that's great. And I'm going to add uh, the links for both events and um and i know you mentioned it earlier i've got my blues alley t-shirt on today yeah uh, a staple in dc and so much is changing not sure where the future may hold but i will say i've seen a number of your shows there and i know that you have done some virtual ones do you have any more lined up with them coming up maybe not with them i mean you know me once i get it and i learn what i can do with right. blues alley and i have a connect with my consumers i am blues alley you know I so understand. it's like, it's I like understand. <laughs> you will be seeing other virtual events for me right. Um, right. And directly. but if you sign up for our newsletter and we'll partner with you again i mean you know it's getting towards you know fall so yep. we'll figure out what we'll do on the inside but going into the spring we'll have a next year is exciting we're, we're going we're, we're looking forward to it and i'll have all those links for our listeners and viewers because this also be on our youtube page so marcus i do want to thank you again and hope you have an amazing weekend and uh this will air on tuesday so folks will be okay. gearing up for their week so yeah. hey look also i forgot one thing that yeah. organization national center for children and families we're having the gala event live streamed on october 16th if you okay. go to ncpfcares.org, um, okay. you can uh-huh. find out information. But like we, these people are raising the kids that are abandoned. They're raising the kids that other people oh. didn't want to raise, and we uh-huh. need to support them. Whatever level you can, you yeah. should, and you should um, uh, participate on the, the 16th if you can. Absolutely. I will post up that link as well. Um, we've got some uh, events coming up, actually, are pretty exciting, too. I don't know if you've heard of College Bound. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an organization. We they have a golf tournament coming out here at Woodmore, and so we'll be posting that information. Right. Uh, it is actually going to be on October 29th. Huh? Ha! Huh. Would love to have you come. Yes! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> so we will we will post all that up. And as always, you're an amazing friend, amazing musician, and an amazing man. And so thank you for your time, and uh, looking forward to having around with you soon. Hey, look, same to you, and thanks for your service. Uh, Thanks for being you. Thank you, MJ. Look forward to talking to you later. All right, you take care. I'll tell him to Please do. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. 
Well, thank you for joining us for another wonderful show of Road to Par the Podcast. We just wanted to remind you that views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on Road to Par the Podcast are that of the hosts and Road to Par LLC. All of our guests, callers, advertisers are independently of their own. So thank you again for joining us and look forward to having you join us on our Road to Par.